Hey everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how to make this mug rug. This is part of my No Stretch Stitch series and I've got five of them in the series, some of which I use for my No Stretch crochet bag patterns, but I have some other ones that you can use for things that you don't want to stretch, you know, something like garments, um, household items and such. And I'm using two colors for this so that you can really see the difference in each row. These are just single crochet variations, so it's beginner friendly. And the final measurement is about seven inches by, we've got seven plus the fringe, about four, four and a half. And I like this size. I have a mug rug in this um, size already and it's, it's great. All right, so I'm using, this is, um, these are both cotton yarns. This is from Hobby. This is a burgundy color. I don't know how it's showing on screen. And then I have this variegated yarn color. It's a cotton. There's a little bit of polyester in it. It's really nice soft cotton. And I love this colorway. It's called um, Gray Splash. And you can see it almost makes this look shimmery, even though it's just a flat cotton. Right, and you'll need, it's a good stash buster. You need about maybe 15, I'd say, yards of your main color to include the fringe and then a lesser amount in your accent color. So I'm going to start with a six millimeter crochet hook and that helps this stitch have a little more flexibility. When I use it for the uh, bag strap, it's really good for market bags so that it's not drooping down to your knees. Uh, I use a much smaller hook. So you can get flexibility with any of the no stretch stitches just by going up to a uh, hook size and play with it. Get it how you want it. All right, so I'm going to chain 22. All right, so there's 22, and then I'm just going to turn and go back and work single crochet second chain from hook across the row. Looks like I split my yarn there. And you will need a stitch marker for this. There's no cutting yarn. Yeah, I'm splitting my yarn. So you'll have 21 stitches when you're done. You can go a little bigger or a little smaller or if you want to make placemats with it. It's all single crochet, so your starting count doesn't really matter other than to get the measurement that you want. Just make sure that you maintain your stitch count throughout and those end stitches that you catch them and work that stitch in there. Otherwise, you're going to have a lopsided project. I'm going to finish this row and I'll be back. The wind is howling outside. It's a beautiful sunny day, but it's winter and these cold fronts can come through fast and furious and that's what's happening. That could be what you're hearing. I'm sure that the microphone is picking that up. All right, so I finished my row. I have 21 stitches, 21 single crochet. I'm going to pull my stitch up and just hold it open with a stitch marker. Okay, so no cutting, no ends to weave in, just the last stitch or the last uh, tails, the starting and ending tails. You might even be able to work those in when you're um, going to work a side finishing row. So don't worry about the um, edges looking, uh, the colors looking wonky. You do not bring the new color up like you normally would when you do a color change. So I'm gonna make a loop, my color number two. So now for row number two, I'm going to bring it in right here, the, on the last stitch. So when this row's done, I'm just going to do the same thing. Leave it open at this end, the gray color, put that stitch marker at this end and then come back and bring this across and you will love me for not having to do all these 
uh, color changes. All right, so this row uh, worked with this accent color will always just be a regular single crochet. So I'm securing it by working the first one, that's one stitch, and then I'll do the other 20 single crochet across. So at this point, it's not a no stretch stitch. But when we work the next row, you will see why it is a no or low stretch stitch, depending on the hook size. This would be a really pretty blanket too. If you go up um, maybe to a seven, 7.5 hook. My 20 stitches, and then there's my last one. It's a little bit slanted from the turn. I might use my little fine hook there. Show you. Split my yarn again. You see it there? It's the yarn. Bring that through. Not too tight. Pull through. I'll pull this stitch up and move my stitch marker to hold it open. Now at this point, you can weave this tail in as you go if you would like to. I think I'll do that. All right, so I'm going to snug this up a little bit. Chain one. I'll lay this tail down here. And now you're going to just work down. So instead of going into the stitch like you normally would here, So normally we go in there and work our stitch, right? We're not doing that for this row. So we'll take the yarn, just go down into that same hole, same stitch that this one was in, where that V is. Bring it up, pull up high, sweep this tail in. Put that. And work the stitch. The next one, drop down into here again. So this is wrapping the stitch below, and that's why it's getting so much support. Well, this just doesn't want to work. That wrapping it, um, weaving that tail. So I'll just let it let it be. Again, go down under and into that same space where that stitch was worked. Pull up. Down under. And work this stitch. Down under, wrap that row. And it's going to start creating you kind of see the texture. I don't know if the camera's showing it that well, but these pronounced, almost like a braided cord look row. You can see it's just not stretching very much. It's a nice sturdy stitch. You can use it all kind of household things too. Baskets. I did a dish towel with this uh, a few years ago. It's really pretty. And go under and into that same stitch. Under into the same stitch. Under. Pull up. And that's all there is to it. So I'm going 
going to work a few more rows. I'll come back. Let me finish this one though, and we'll do a changing of the uh, stitch marker at the end. Those first stitches, uh, not so much with the contrast color, but with this main color, that first um, stitch you work into sometimes can look a little confusing. So let me do another one of those with you. Remember the edges not being pretty don't matter because we're going to work a border row on the sides, the short sides. Not cover all that up. I did this technique where you don't uh, cut and change with a striped baby blanket. My rainbow blanket, I'll link that. And it's got six color changes, so that would have been a lot of threads to weave in. But the main color never got cut. Okay, here I'm at the last stitch, so I've got to work under that last stitch down here. that tight little turn row. Okay, move this out of the way. Pull this up and through. Pull up nice and high. Finish the stitch. Pull it up. And change where that marker is. Turn. bring my gray back over here. This can get really tangled if you don't move your yarn to the side you're working on. Let me tighten this up a little bit. Turn. Not too loose. Chain one. Move this stitch out of the way. Find that first stitch, the top of it, right there. So this row is just single crochet. There's no dropping down anywhere into any other row. Get this out of the way. And double check your stitch count. Make sure that you still have 21. Finish that row. Move my stitch marker. And then come back. Alright, so let's look at the place stitch placement. Again, for this chain one. That just helps bring it up. Alright, so let's see where that first stitch was worked turn that's the chain one here's the stitch and it was worked down there so that first double crochet will go down in there uh, not double crochet I'm sorry the single crochet that's wrapping that stitch row going down that's there so now this next one the first one usually looks a little wonky but once you work into it it meets up with the others just fine. So from now on, it's going to be really easy. Just keep working down into that same stitch where the alternating color was. See, just go right in there, pull up nice and high, work the stitch. You might be able to get this done in an hour. I think that's about how long the first one took me. The fringe is a little fiddly, but you know, fringe always is fiddly, isn't it? Nice and high. Then you'll repeat these rows until it reaches about four and a half inches or whatever size it is that you want to make yours. Very pretty. I'm coming up on my last row. And here at 
the end. You can see I pulled, I cut the yarn and just pulled the loop through. So I want to work that down a little bit. I could use a tapestry needle, but this is what I have nearby. I'm just going to pull it through a little bit. Because when I work the side border, that will secure this for me. So I won't really even have to worry about weaving it in past what I'm doing right now. Just wrap it in there a bit. Okay, I'll get back to finishing this row. chain one and work another row on top just so that it matches this down here. So just be single crochet across the top. And I'll chain one and work down the sides. This is where we'll hide all of these little rough edges, of the color transition. And I also will make it easy to put in the little fringe. So I recommend making the fringe kind of short because if not, if the fringe is long and you have a glass of something hot or cold sitting on there, which is why we use mug rugs and coasters, right? Um, something could grab it or get caught on it and pull it off the table, crashing it to the floor, uh, making us scream. <laughs> something beloved cup or bowl might possibly break and you know, we don't want that. So just save yourself some grief and keep it short too. I think I have these. These look like they're just over an inch. Um, inch and a half. If it's too short, it looks a little silly. And if it's too long, that won't be practical. So when you cut your fringe, you, know, you have to allow for the knot. So I would cut it at about four, four and a half inches per strand. here just to close up that gap of that starting chain. You see that hid most of that. So now I will cut this yarn and then work a, um, a row down the other side. And I'll start, I'm going to start up here so that I can catch this and weave it in just a little bit more. Not too tight, otherwise it'll buckle. enough to secure my ends, so I'll snip them here. Put that 
and my yarn scraps. I have a whole video on polyfill alternatives and yarn scraps is definitely in there. I'll link that video. So now I will work my fringe. All right, so my fringe, I've just cut several lengths to put in. And then when you're doing your fringe, you always wanna do it from the same direction so that it looks the same because the front and the back have a little bit of a different look. So I go into the stitch off camera for that. Let me go up here a little bit. So I go into the stitch on the side there, pull my yarn through, hook it through. And then bring it around. Snug it up. These are about four inches long. As I mentioned earlier, so go into that stitch through. Make sure my ends are even. Pull them through. Make it tight. 